Hello, I'm the Hitchhiker. After some delay, I'm pleased to announce the next update to the Collaborative Cheat Trainer. Unlike some of the previous updates, this release does not contain new major features, like a new version of Strive or a complete rework. Instead, this update has focused on polishing the feel of the trainer and resolving long-standing issues, with the objective of creating a product that feels comfortable for users to include as a key part of their Devil May Cry experience. That's not to say there are no new features. Several impressive new mods have been added, but they are not the central focus of this update. Without any further ado, let's review the new release. To start with, the most obvious change to the trainer is the appearance itself. Introduced initially as part of the December 17th compatibility update, this new UI is the product of Darkness, who has spent the past year working on its development. The new appearance draws on the UI direction of the game itself, in order to help the trainer more closely fit with the overall aesthetic. When asked for a comment on the size of this project and the time taken to complete it, he said, DirectX 12 is a bitch. Along with visual updates, a clarity pass has been made on much of the trainer's text. Multiple mods have had their names and descriptions changed to ensure that they better communicate their purpose. In addition, submods have been reorganized, either grouped together or split apart, depending on their functionality. I recommend refamiliarizing yourself with the mod list when downloading the new version. These changes aren't just cosmetic, however. The loading times of the trainer have also been reduced significantly, and a long requested feature has finally been added. Mousing over a mod in the trainer window will now give the option to hotkey the mod to a gamepad or keyboard input. This will allow users to change mod settings mid-gameplay, which can be critical for users attempting to record certain types of content. For instance, the turbo mod could be bound to a button to allow time to slow for dramatic effect mid-combo, or one-hit kill could be enabled to ensure an enemy died on a specific move. When toggling a mod, a notification will show up on the screen indicating that the hotkey was used. This feature can be toggled in the new settings window, accessed by clicking on the gear in the top left of the trainer window. These features took a significant amount of development time to add, so I hope they are well received. Some new mods have been added that affect core gameplay. Dante has received a mod that lets him cancel any move with a royal guard block, and another allowing him to cancel out of some cavalier moves with long startups, allowing players to exploit their iframes to dodge incoming attacks. An old type of cancel has been added as well, land canceling. Present in earlier games, land canceling would allow players to cancel the recovery of aerial moves by landing on the ground, giving them the opportunity to act instantly. An infinite HP mod has also been added, which will be helpful when resetting a PvP match, or simply if you'd like to cheat. Finally, a separate game speed can now be set using the turbo mod when in menus to allow for faster navigation. The Systems tab has received a few minor adjustments to help smooth out game feel. Both camera and heads-up display settings have been reworked to consolidate changes, and an option to never hide Virgil's weapon wheel has been added. Hold to Mash now supports multiple characters where appropriate, as well as once again supporting Ebony and Ivory's normal shot. The Scenario tab has seen the addition of a new series of mods created by VP Zadov to help with mission customization. The Custom Checkpoints mod allows you to set the coordinates of your checkpoint anywhere in a mission. Coordinates can be entered manually, or set to the player's current position. After doing so, simply hitting Checkpoint in the game's menu will allow you to restart at that position. By default, if no custom checkpoint is set, the game will spawn you outside the boss arena of the respective level. The Enemy Swapper allows you to swap any enemy for any other enemy in the game, 
without the need of file mods. It also includes a series of behavior modifications that will allow boss enemies to fight outside their own arenas without soft locking. While originally introduced in the June 2021 update, this new update has streamlined some of these boss fixes and included a new UI that clearly shows what enemies are being swapped. Related to the enemy swapper is the new Increased Enemy Spawn mod, allowing you to tweak the quantity of spawns for specific enemies. Last, but certainly not least, is one of the most technically impressive mods included in the trainer, the Enemy Wave Editor. The Enemy Wave Editor allows you to entirely replace the spawn data of an encounter with your own custom data, effectively allowing you to make your own mission. As this mod is still in a beta state, the process for using it is somewhat complex, but the results are worthwhile. These mods should serve to increase Devil May Cry 5's replay value, as well as experiment with enemy combinations not present in the vanilla campaign. If you have the opportunity, please check them out. With the discussion of changes to core systems out of the way, let's discuss character-specific changes. Cyan has created a new mod for Dante that links SDT and DT together as a single meter, combining their costs and removing quadruple S restrictions for those who would like to use SDT as a core part of Dante's moveset. A mod extending the range of Dante's tricks has also been added. A few other minor changes have been made as well, so I strongly encourage you to try them out and experiment. Virgil has received many new mods in this update. As I won't have time to go over all of them, I'll highlight the key ones. A modification to allow Virgil to block while moving has been added. Virgil can now also do a directional trick while in mid-air, allowing him to reposition around an enemy. Lastly, and in a masterwork of skill, VP Zadoff has made the DMC3 Judgment Cut End. When performing Judgment Cut End in human form, Virgil will instead perform his boss attack from Devil May Cry 3, barraging the enemy with an extended series of Judgment Cuts. Finally, Nero has received a long-awaited update. Breaker Switcher version 4.0 is a complete rewrite of the old Breaker Switcher mod. I say old, but this new version will be the fourth rewrite of the Breaker Switcher so far, so perhaps it would be better to say it's another rewrite of the mod instead? This new version of the Breaker Switcher was designed with the goal of making the mod feel like a natural part of Nero's gameplay experience. To that end, two specific areas were prioritized, in-game feel and game balance. The old Breaker Switcher worked by forcing a breakaway animation and changing the next breaker in Nero's magazine. This method suffered from cumbersome animations and delays in switching that would interrupt combos even when trying to flow fluidly. In this new approach, we directly call the game's breaker creation function with no animation required. Nero will seamlessly swap between breakers without any interruption to his combo flow, while still respecting the game's cancel frames and input windows to ensure Nero's responsiveness feels identical to his vanilla counterpart. In regards to balance, efforts have been made to make the breaker switcher feel more integrated with in-mission gameplay. A common complaint with the Breaker Switcher in the past has been that it made Nero too powerful by giving him access to unlimited breakaways and breakages. While several ideas of how to balance this were discussed, I believe I've come up with a satisfactory solution. When in mission, the cost of breakaways, breakages, and damaged breakers will still apply, meaning you'll have to collect and manage your breakers like in vanilla. However, having at least one breaker in your magazine will let you swap between any of the breakers you have assigned to the D-pad. In effect, this turns breakers into a single, shared ammunition type. With this change, Nero's breakers now share the fluidity and creativity of Dante's style system, while still maintaining the sense of caution and resource management that made them feel unique. Several additional options have been added as well, 
including one to cycle through breakers like a weapon wheel, assign an override button to perform a breakaway, and even a feature originally intended for Nero's Strive release, Double Breakers. This modification allows you to assign a secondary breaker in place of Nero's Devilbringer, allowing you to wield two breakers at the same time. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the feature most requested for the breaker switcher. The new version supports keyboard hotkey bindings to each slot, allowing the Devil Breaker switcher to finally be used with keyboard controls. This concludes the feature list for the February update. I'd like to apologize for how long it took me to get this update to come together. A combination of technically difficult roadblocks and burnout resulted in an extended hiatus from updates. To that end, I'd like to take a moment to thank the development team for all the work they've put in over the course of this year, especially to Darkness and VP Zadov for all of their contributions. I'd also like to thank my patrons for their support over this year, both financially and morally. Joining lets you request simple mods and gives you access to the patron-only Discord, so if you feel like supporting the project, I hope to see you there. So, what can you expect to see in the future? For the immediate present, I'll see about porting some simpler mods from the older cheat table, along with technical support for this release to ensure a stable, bug-free version of the trainer is available for use. Beyond that, I have plans to integrate a new mod framework into the trainer that will allow for more technically advanced mods to be created and implemented at a faster rate. This project will take a while, but the end result should empower us to create mods that are more stylish than ever before. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.